Hey, my name is Dr. Shaw. Dr. Maxfield. Welcome back to our channel. We got a huge topic for you. Groundbreaking. Not really groundbreaking, but it's, <laughs> yeah. a, it's a big deal. So I get a lot of questions about this. About 90% of people suffer from this, at least at some point in their lifetime. Acne. So we are going to talk about what causes acne. And this is a super important video because if you have acne, it's really important to know what causes acne because then you'll understand how to treat acne and you won't fall for skincare tricks and you won't fall for skincare trends and you will be able to be empowered to take control of your skin. So if you have acne, start here and then we'll talk about more stuff later on. All right, here we go. Here we go. All right, so big topic, huge topic, important topic. What is the first thing that causes acne? So acne all starts with oil production. So oil production, it's mediated by hormones, androgens. It starts around puberty when your oil glands become active. And this oil production has a lot of different downstream consequences. Right, so when you're going through puberty, you get an increase in testosterone production and other androgens. Those androgens act on little cells that are in your skin that cause increased oil production. Increased oil production, we also call it sebum. And that increased sebum production is the first step in the pathogenesis or the cause of acne. And we also see this in polycystic ovarian syndrome and what we call hormonal acne, where increased androgen causes increased oil production, and that's the first step. So what comes after oil production? Well, oil production leads to occlusion or obstruction. So the pores get occluded by this oil uh, in part, and then that also relates to increased keratinocyte cohesiveness. So what is a keratinocyte? It's just a fancy way that dermatologists say skin cell. And your keratinocytes are really sticky at some point, and then they end up causing obstruction of your pores. In addition to that increased oil production that's also blocking your pores, you also have increased skin cell stickiness. And that is gonna be your second step in causing acne. So the first step leads to the second step, which leads to the third step, and that is bacterial overgrowth. The bacterial overgrowth, why does this happen, right? So you got these little bacteria and it's on all of our skin and in some people it doesn't cause any problems like we've talked about this. Yeah. Sometimes you can have mites, sometimes you can have yeast, sometimes you can have bacteria on your skin. And he has a ton on his skin. <laughs> I don't have anything on my skin. But he specifically has a ton of stuff on his skin but it doesn't cause any acne. In some people it doesn't. But in some people when you create this perfect storm of increased sebum production, increased keratinocyte cohesiveness, blocking of your pores, now the bacteria starts to cause problems. So this bacteria, formerly called Propionibacter acne, is now called Cutibacterium acne. This proliferation leads to a large cascade and a fourth step of this process, and that's inflammation. Inflammation. So inflammation is a super complicated thing. What causes it? What factors play a role? There are so many different things from immune cells coming in to secreting these little signaling proteins that tell other immune cells to come in and attack this bacteria. And so you get tons of inflammation that builds up around this bacterial proliferation. So we have our oil production, which leads to obstruction. The obstruction leads to bacterial overgrowth. Bacterial overgrowth leads to inflammation. And guess what? Actually, all of the treatment things that we have available are specific to one or all of these steps of acne pathogenesis. And so when we're thinking about it, we're actually thinking about what's going on under the microscope, what's going on at the cellular level, and then we're targeting your skin at each of those four integral steps. Exactly, so say for example, someone says to me, well, I'm using hyaluronic acid, why is my acne got, not getting better? Well, hyaluronic doesn't do anything that targets one of these four things. And so you have to start thinking about acne in this way, and then you pick skincare ingredients that will fight one of these four things. So let's pick it apart. So the first one being oil production. Uh, what do we have in your armament? What do you, you have in your armament that you can use to stop the oil production? That's a good question. To actually stop the oil production is pretty difficult to keep the oil from clogging your pores a little bit different. So one of the things that may or may not decrease oil production, there has been some evidence to suggest that it might, is niacinamide. So niacinamide might decrease sebum production in some people. 
Then there are prescription medications that you can take orally that can also decrease oil production, but that's beyond the scope of what we're going to talk about in this video today. Okay, so after we're decreasing the oil production, there's got to be more. <laughs> It's just got to be more. Salicylic acid can penetrate your pores and try to help get rid of some of that oil, but there's nothing that really actually decreases oil production. Or not. So if you can't, okay, so if there's not a lot out there that actually over the counter is going to be able to consistently decrease your oil production, there are some things that you can stop doing that are going to help decrease the oil that your body's making. So one of those is actually backing up to the cleanse stage. And so we talked about this before. But don't over scrub your skin. Don't use harsh cleansers. Don't use harsh scrubs because your body's natural defense, if it gets over irritated or your skin's natural defense, is actually going to be to produce more oil. And it's going to counteract everything you're trying to do to get this acne to clear up. Exactly. So when you see something in the skincare aisle that says astringent or has a high concentration of rubbing alcohol or denatured alcohol in it and it's a toner, then it probably is stripping your skin and is going to cause inflammation and increase your oil production, which are two of the causes of acne. So avoid skincare ingredients like that. So after oil production, we now move on to our obstruction. And there's actually, I feel like, a lot more to this that we have available. Yeah, so it's obstruction of your pores that allows this bacteria to build up. So what's foundational to treating the obstruction? One of the first steps in acne treatment in general is retinoids. And retinoids help to decrease the skin cohesiveness and it also helps to decrease inflammation in the skin. And so it's gonna play multiple roles in treating acne. Part of the retinoids process, the synthetic vitamin A, it actually increases your cell and skin turnover. So a lot of the flakiness and irritation that people get within the first couple weeks of using it, it actually is just a byproduct of what this vitamin is supposed to be doing. Other things you can use that will also have additional benefits, salicylic acid, glycolic acid, things that'll help loosen up and debride some of that super, super superficial layer of buildup on the skin. Right, and so that is, those things that are blocking those pores that are allowing that cascade to continue, your acids like salicylic acid, which is a beta hydroxy acid, is going to help to break those pimples down to keep them from forming, to keep the bacteria from building up, and to keep you from getting a really inflammatory acne bump. Next, bacterial overgrowth. Who doesn't want more bacteria on their skin? It could be amazing, or it could be the worst thing ever. There's a lot we have topically and orally to help decrease the amount of bacteria on your skin. Some of the topical things that you can use include benzoyl peroxide. This has been such a foundational part of acne treatment forever for those of you who are old enough like me. Clearasil and even early proactive, it was like all benzoyl peroxide based. And it used to stain all your clothing and no one ever told you that it would stain <laughs> yeah. your clothing. And then you'd be like, why are all my pillows different colors? Why are all my towels different colors? That's the benzoyl peroxide at work there. So it's kind of bleaching all your stuff. But it's good at doing what it does. It um, uh, it's antibacterial actually to a tremendous extent, so much so the bacteria almost never become resistant to it. And that's why we often pair benzoyl peroxide with something like a topical antibiotic. So it does complementary additive benefits to decrease the bacteria on your skin and prevent the bacteria from becoming resistant to whatever else we're using. Topical antibiotics, kind of self-explanatory. And some of your acids, your salicylic acid, your glycolic acid, your azelaic acid are also going to have some degree of antibacterial activity as well as breaking down those pimples for you. So we've addressed the oil production. We've addressed the blocking of the pores. We've addressed the bacterial buildup. What else can we do for inflammation? That's the last step. Yeah, so the nice thing is by treating all, all of the three previous steps, you're vicariously treating the fourth step inflammation, but you can also target this individually at the same time, right? The thing I feel like it keeps coming up, but niacinamide does have a role in decreasing inflammation. Some goob said turmeric. I don't know who that might have been, but turmeric actually may work. Turmeric, everybody knows. Haldi, if you guys are any of my, you know, my South Asian followers. Um, South you know, Asian, Indonesian. Um, so basically, I always talk about turmeric, and turmeric has been shown to have anti-acne properties, antibacterial properties, anti-inflammatory properties. However, uh, we just need to formulate it properly. So I'm looking for the day that we find the perfect formulation of turmeric that is going to be great for your skincare products. Retinoids here. Retinoids are also foundational at decreasing the inflammation on the skin through a pretty complex signaling cascade, but they decrease the inflammation, help calm that side of it down along with addressing multiple other parts of the path. Right, so retinoids, they're so foundational because they target three out of four of the causes of acne. And your oil retinoids, um, like your Accutane, um, which we can talk about in a later video, also decreases oil production. So true. 
Uh, Accutane's like not a thing though. Oh yeah. <laughs> so Accutane is actually not a thing and we refer to it a lot as Accutane because you know it's what we were introduced to it as um, but it's really been taken off the market many many years ago. The Accutane is a brand name and it really is isotretinoin which is a prescription medication which has a lot of different brand names nowadays um, but it is colloquially called Accutane. Accutane. Uh, oral vitamin A it's the most effective thing we have it targets all of the steps in the pathway. It is a bomb that you drop on acne. It's a strong medicine, and with strong medicines, there are strong effects from it that you'll notice you're gonna get dried out. We'll talk about retinoids individually another time. So we're gonna put some affiliate links below so that you know what products are best over the counter that are gonna target some of these issues. Um, and you know, using those affiliate links help to support the channel, but of course, always look for a better price because we want you guys not to spend a lot of money on skincare. But actually, the treatment for acne over the counter really shouldn't cost you a lot of money, honestly. Um, yeah. the, the really powerful things that are out there, there are a lot of systems that they'll try to sell you, three-step skincare system. You really don't need things like that. We can give you just individual products that you can use to fight your acne at home. But then you sort of reach this point, and, I, and, I, and I'm going to show you guys a picture of the type of acne that cannot be treated with your over-the-counter medications. Yeah, at this point, please, please, please see a dermatologist. It is a very realistic expectation if caught early and if you are able to see a dermatologist that you can enter adulthood with little to no acne scars. We're fortunate enough to have a lot of good medications. You know, and I actually didn't know about these growing up as a kid. Wasn't familiar with modern medicine, wasn't familiar with medicine at all. Um, but we have amazing things to treat acne. So that type of acne, definitely want to see a dermatologist or another type of doctor that can help you with prescription medications. And like Dr. Maxfield says, we have made tremendous advances in the treatment of acne. And so we can get you almost 100% clear almost 100% of the time. It's almost good enough. I don't want to say always, you know. <laughs> I but know, there's never Almost always. always. So these are the foundations of acne. And if you do have acne, what I want you to do after exiting out of this video is go to your skincare routine, make sure that you have at least one of these ingredients, sometimes two of these ingredients, and decide whether or not you are actually treating your acne. And if not, look for one of these products that can help you. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for tuning in. Like, comment, and subscribe. Uh, leave some comments below and thank you for your trust and support. Just wink at it. <laughs> We're keeping that. That's how you get arrested in 2020. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. All right. All right. I just say it like that. <laughs> That's how I talk. You gotta talk like that. What's up, Pat? How's it going, bro? You won't yeah. even see this because I'm gonna cut it. Um. Missed you. Um, all right. So my name is Dr. Shaw. Dr. Maxfield. Today we got what he's calling mama bear. Uh, we got the mama bear of skincare things happening. No. <laughs> no.